So the same thing is that, you know, in order for us to understand the godly revelation we're about to receive very soon when Mashiach comes, Hashem started sending us all sorts of hints in technology. So I can almost take almost anything in technology and teach you a whole depth about uh, how it's connected to Hashem, how to understand Hashem in, uh, through technology. So Hashem gave us technology, A, so we can start preparing for the time of the Gula. But more than that, Hashem gave us tool to spread Hashem's word. There's a famous story that the Baal Shem Tov on Yom Kippur went up to the chamber of Mashiach and he asked Mashiach, when are you going to come? So Mashiach told him, as soon as your wellsprings will break out. So we have to use it. We have to make sure that every Jew and non-Jew starts understanding that the redemption is coming. So you use any option that you have. But if you can handle it, then Andrabah. But the majority of people don't handle it. And, you know, a lot of women say, oh, I can handle it. I don't have a problem of looking at not sneers women, and I don't have a problem of this or that. But if two hours on Facebook causes you not to pray, and you have to pray, and if anybody comes and tells you that women are exempt from praying, he's wrong. Open Shulchan Aruch, and it says that a woman has to pray at least once a day. So if watching videos on Facebook makes you not pray one day, so you can't handle it. So yes, if a person goes there and he watches, I have one person that I met, and he started telling me how he's becoming more chozer b'tshuva, and he mitchazek, and he told me, oh, it's unbelievable, I'm, how he was telling me, he was telling me, I don't know if you know what it means, but he was be'orot. And then I told him, this is amazing, where do you learn? He tells me, I don't really go to a yeshiva, but yeah, I, I see videos on YouTube. Told him, YouTube? YouTube is not a yeshiva. <laughs> learning Torah, you're learning a yeshiva. <laughs> no, I don't really have time. I told him, YouTube, you, yeah, YouTube is good. I also put videos on YouTube. That's when you're driving. Or you work, you want something to play in the background. Torah, you learn in a yeshiva. You don't learn Torah from a screen. So the problem is that is, there is sheker in it. This clipper will pull you in and tell you, yeah, yeah, watch, your, watch now a lecture on YouTube. But in the side, there's going to be all sorts of ads. And after you finish the lecture, go and watch this, the rest of the nonsense that you're going to find after that. The point is that one needs to be very smart. Because the clipper, this Haman, is smarter than us. We're not, we, we didn't invent the wheel. He's much more smarter than us. He will come like that. To bring you in, and then he's going to be, okay, now that I have you, now I'm going to hit you on the head. You know, he learned the trick from the snake. You know, the Nachash in Gan Eden, he wasn't allowed to come into Gan Eden. There was a sign outside, no, no animals. Just Saddam and Chava. So he knocked on the door, Chava told him, go away. He knocked again, he was like, I told you, go away. So he, said, he knew he can't get through to Adam. So he's like, I'm going to work on Chava. So he stood next to the door and started singing all sorts of love songs. He's holding a violin. Da -da -da -da. He was calling her, come, just let me in. I just want to see. And she told him, no, Hashem told us you can't come in. Come on, one, I just one glimpse. I want to see this garden. Everybody's talking about. So she just opened the door for one second. He looked in and that's it. And up until today, we're suffering. So this clipak tells you, come, come. I just, one minute, I just want to see. And then you can go on your business. So the point is that our war right now, this Milchemet Gogu Magog, it's not the missiles. It's what's planted in our brains. And the point is that, you, you know, our sages say, Alta min ad Don't believe in yourself. Don't think you're just so good, strong. I'm not telling you. I'm just saying in general. Yes, you have to use technology. You have to use technology to spread Hashem's word. Whatever you need to do, anything. But one needs to, to, to proceed with a lot of cautious. And if a person knows that it might set a trap, then you don't do it. You just don't do it. The point is it's not only the internet. The internet is one thing. I'm not coming here not to start preaching to you, don't use the internet and don't have smartphones. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. The point is to know how to block this clipper from coming in.
that, that it's going to start penetrating the thoughts. It's not I just gave one example out of many with the internet, but this milchemet gigim can be from many other places. Every person, whether you want to admit it or not, all day long has an internal war in his brain. And no person can say, oh no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly fine. We all have the war. Everybody has this war. Every second of the day you have this war in your mind. Should I get up to the minion? Should I not get up to the minion? Should I pray with the minion? Should I not pray with the minion? Oh, I can pray at home, it's fine. All day long you have this... Okay, so one can say, Yetzirah. Yetzirah is a very broad definition. But if you go a hundred years ago to Russia, when they had swords on their neck, they weren't thinking twice if to pray with a minion. They would be Mesirut Nefesh going to dip in a mikveh and learn Torah in undergrounds. They didn't have this Yetzirah. Why? They had a whole different thing to deal with. Our war in our generation is the war of thoughts. Now I need to control it. That's how I'm going to win at least my war. Because to win it on a very large scale, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's not easy. First I have to r overpower my own, my own galut, my personal galut, my personal exile I have, to, I have to fight. And if I'm able to start fighting my own personal exile, then I'm contributing to the entire large scale to bring the gula faster. Now, this war of thoughts, it's not necessarily the screen, and not necessarily my yetzer hara that tells me, oh, don't do this, do that. There's even a more refined level that our main battle right now is our own ego. And this is the main manifestation of the klipa. <coughs> is the klipa is a bubble of air. It pumps me up. This is called yeshut, metziut, I'm something. Now, I'm not saying that people think that they're so good. Rather, it brings out in me all these character traits and all these midot that make me think that the world owes me something. How dare does she say that about me? And how dare the he do this and says that about him? The thing is that our, uh, the, our main war, the, our internal war, is a how somebody else dared to do that to me. So it comes out in anger, it comes out in, in, in envy, it comes out in animosity, it comes out with grudge. All these things that everybody is fighting with. You know, it's, I can't say it's normal, but almost any parent, a child will do something totally irrelevant, they flip out. Parents like lose control over nothing. Something's on the floor, you know, a cup spilled with water. Screaming like as if, what happened? And it's not only that, it's every little thing that happens, you know, our emotions are out of control. Our thoughts and our emotions are completely out of control. So, yes, I would say that part, part of it is a product of the environment. So people say, there's pressure, I have to pay rent, and there's always who to blame. That's another, another character trait of the klipa, that I have to find who to blame. Don't blame anyone. This is the situation, deal with it. The point is that the internal war that I have is coming and attacking from all directions. It's attacking me, first of all, with everything that my eyes see. And my eyes see, they register everything. Don't think it doesn't register nothing. Our eyes register every detail that's around us and it shoots it back into our subconscious. More than that, what's around me that is controlling me, and you have to be, you know, you see things around, but you have to create a filter. The next thing that is controlling in my mind is not necessarily the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah is a normal thing. We always had the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah is a good thing. The Yetzirah is my personal trainer. And if my Yetzirah would not operate, then I will never get to anywhere. The Yetzirah is my best friend. And if you treat him like your best friend, you can actually manipulate the situation that you control him. So don't try to argue or put down the Yetzirah. He's coming actually to make you a better person. But there's more deeper levels than the Yetzirah. And this is these klipot that we let to come into our body, this kuchot of impurity, this negative energy that controls us. Now, the reality is 
that everybody has the same thing. Everybody is fighting the same war. Each one comes in a different way. One person will come in this way, one person will come in that way. We all have the war. Don't, don't live in a, in a denial that we don't. You just have to now start figuring out how I'm dealing with it. Now the point is that this is the war that I'm fighting right now. If I want to get at least to my own personal redemption, then I have to start fighting at least my personal war. The question is, how do I start doing it? How do I make sure that I don't get affected by everything that it's around me, that at least this, this clip of Haman doesn't penetrate to me? So, Bashgachapotit, we have, the, the information is fresh in our mind, because we just read the Megillah last week. So, if you don't remember it well, then read it again, because all the secrets is right in the Megillah. Amazingly, we see that in the words of the Megillah, it says Megillah Tester. Megillah is not necessarily the scroll, the Megillah, rather comes from the word Legalot, Gila, to reveal. And Esther is something that is concealed. So the Megillah comes to Legalot et Esther, it comes to reveal something that is hidden. And if you look in the Megillah, you get all the answers. Now amazingly, what did Haman wanted to do? Haman wanted to kill Mordechai. He less cared. In the beginning, he didn't care about the Jews. He wanted to kill Mordechai. Mordechai is the tzaddik of the generation. He's the ultimate beetle to, to Hashem. This was Mordechai. And Haman was the complete opposite. The, 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 op the opposition. If you see, Haman wanted to kill Mordechai. How? He wanted to hang him on a pole that is 50 amot high. You know what's 50 amot high? It's like a 17-story building. Can you hang it on a little tree? Why does it have to be 50 amot? The reason why Haman wanted to, to hang Mordechai on 50 amot, because he knew that if he will bring Mordechai to the level of the 50th gates of impurity, then he will have control over the tzaddik of the generation. Therefore, he didn't settle for 42 or 49 or 46. Dafka 50, he wanted to bring him, he knew that the Jews in Mitzrayim were sunk into 49 gates of impurity, and if one more gate, they will be sunk into the 50th gate, that's it, they can't go out of Mitzrayim. <coughs> and the miracle of Purim came to finish Matan Torah. Matan Torah is when it started, and Purim is when it finished. That's when the Jews actually accepted the Torah willingly and with love. Because on the mountain, in, Mar in Har Sinai, they accepted it Bekfiya. Hashem turned the mountain upside down and told him, you accept the Torah, or I'm going to bury you here. So in, Mata, in, in the miracle of Purim, it's when they accept it from love. Haman knew that if he's going to have control over the leader of the generation, the ultimate beetle to Hashem, that we get our chayut from the leader of the generation, then he was going to be able to have control over everybody. How would Haman kill Millions of Jews scattered on 127 countries. He didn't have machines like Hitler and Machshimo. How would he do it? Would he poison them? No. He said, I'm going to kill the top, and then I'm going to have control over them. Very simple. I'm going to kill Mordechai. I'm going to have control over him. That way I can control all of them, and I'm going to make them come to me. I'll convert them. I'll make them do whatever I want. And Haman still wants to do it. So to make a very long story short, how do I make sure that this Haman doesn't penetrate to my thoughts? How do I save myself from this war of Gog and Magog? The hint again is in the Megillah. We have four mitzvot on Purim. That everybody has to do it. Men and women. Four mitzvot. Amazingly, all the mitzvot starts with the same letter, Mem. Mem signifies, first of all, it's referring to the Mem Stuma. Mem Stuma is the Mem Sofit, the square, not the Mem that is open. Mem Stuma signifies the ultimate fight of the Yetzirah, the ultimate annullification of the Yetzirah. The first word that starts the Torah, Bereshit bara lokim et hashamayim v'taaretz. The world was created with a bet. Bet has three walls. The top is side and the bottom. But the left side is open. This is called the Ruach Tzfonit. That's where the Yetzirah comes in from. 
That's why the one of the names of the Yetzirara is Tzfoni. The world was created with a bet because Hashem wanted the Yetzirara to penetrate. Because if not, there wouldn't be, you know, there wouldn't be the, 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 the point. But when the time of when the Geulah is going to come, Ve'etruach atuma avir min ha'aretz, I'm going to move the power of impurity, then Mashiach will close the last wall. He will seal the men. A few weeks ago we learned that Hashem told the Jews, Vasitim li mikdash v'shachanti betocham, you should will, will build me a sanctuary and I will dwell in you. There's a question, why betocham? Why plural? You should say betocho, in him, in it. So, the Ari explains, based on Kabbalah, that the word has to be separated, betoch mem. That the Mikdash has to be that Hashem is in the mem, meaning in the four walls of my own Mishkan, that my Mishkan has to be completely closed, that I don't leave any place for the Yetzirah to come in. This is the betocham. So, going back to the mitzvot of Purim, the first mitzvah is Mikra Megillah. The second mitzvah, Matanot Lev Yonim. The third, Matanot Lev Yonim. What is that? Uh, presents to poor people. You have to give uh, charity. The third mitzvah, Mishloach Manot. And the fourth mitzvah is Mishteh Vesimcha. All the four mems. Now, if you're looking at it, we know that there are a few types of godly revelation, what's called Gilu Elokut. Each one corresponds to a different level, it comes from a different place, and it, the effect is different. The lowest level of godly revelation comes from the sphere of Bina. It's called in the Lashon of Kabbalah, Ima, and this affects the level of our Neshama. We know that we have five levels in our Neshama. The highest level is called Yechida, Yechida comes from the word Yichud. A lot of people mistake and they say, think it comes from the word Yechid. But it comes from the word Yichud. Yichud is an ultimate connection. This is what's called a Chelek Eloka, a piece of Hashem, because the soul is completely connected to Hashem. The next level is called Chaya. Chaya is this Or Makif, the surrounding light. This is what a lot of people refer to as Aura. This is what's called in the Lashon of Kabbalah, Tselem. B'tzelem Elokim Nivra Adam. And then we have Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh. So this godly revelation that comes from the sphere of Bina corresponds to the level, it affects the level of Neshama. Then there's a high level of godly revelation comes from the sphere of Chochma. In the Lashon of Kabbalah it's called Abba. And that affects the level of Chaya. And the highest level of godly revelation comes from the sphere of Keter, which in the Lashon of Kabbalah calls Saba and it affects the level of Yechida. Each one of these godly revelations, they come in different times. The lowest level of godly revelation comes on Shabbat. That's why, you know, the godly revelation that we get, we, we get it constantly, we don't see it, but that's the godly revelation that Neshama feels. The, the, the other godly revelations, comes on festivals, come on other auspicious times. But the level that comes from the sphere of Ketel, that affects our Yechida, comes once a year. And this comes on, on, on Lel Seder, on Pesach night. This is how special Seder night is. All you need to do is sit around the table and eat matzah and follow the rules. Your Neshama gets a Gilu Yilukut from the level of Ketel that affects the, the, the part of our Neshama that is called Yechida. But all these Gilu Elukut comes from what's called Seder Ishtal Shelut, from a descending chain. The light that comes down on Purim comes from above Seder Ishtal Shelut, Lemala Mi Seder Ishtal Shelut. That's why our sages teach us that Latid Lavod, the time of Mashiach, the festivals are going to be annulled and Purim will stay. Purim will still have its power. Now, each one of these godly revelations corresponds to one type of a love that we can apply, that affects us. The lowest level of the godly revelation that I talked about comes from Bina that affects our Neshama, corresponds to the love that is called Avata Torah, loving the Torah. And you see that a person might not be the most frumous person or the most learned person. Shabbat comes, he gets this this godly revelation from the sphere of Bina, suddenly he loves the Torah. He wants to learn more Torah. 
You know how many people I know that are not Shomer Torah and Mitzvot? Comes Erev Shabbat, they want to hear a drasha from a rabbi. Oh, I can't wait to hear this Dvar Torah. Why? Because there's a godly revelation, a Heara Elokit from the level of Bina that allows to a person that arouses what's called the Avata Torah. And a person gets a love for the Torah. That's why we see the Dafka on Shabbat. We get aroused. We Dafka want to learn more Torah. We enjoy it more. The second level of godly revelation that affects our Chaya, that arouses a power in us that is called Avat Hashem. So we see that godly revelation comes to us on festivals, on Sukkot, on Shavuot. We see that, you know, in the, in the atmosphere of the holiday, you get aroused and you suddenly have this unbelievable love to Hashem. You suddenly start taking all sorts of achlatot. Uh, uh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You get all excited. Why? Because you, this level of Avat Hashem is being revealed. So you're deciding to take on yourself so many things. The festival is over, everything back to normal. But this highest level of godly revelation that touches our Yechida, it arouses a very special love. And this love is called Avat Israel. And this is the fun foundation and the basic thing to, in order to bring Mashiach. We know that the first Bet HaMikdash was destroyed. Why? From idol worship from forbidden relations and from bloodshed. Since the sin was revealed, the length of the exile was revealed. When they left Mitzrayim, there was a prophecy that they said you're going to be in exile for 70 years. 67 years later came the story with Haman, three years later, back to Yerushalayim. The second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, why? Because of Sinat Chinam. Now since the sin is not revealed, because I can smile at you all day long, and inside of me I'll hate you. So since the sin is not revealed, then the length of the exile is not revealed. And up until today, we are in Galut because of Sinat Chinam. And the reality is that we are in such deep exile only because of Sinat Chinam. Going back to what I said before, this ego, this klipa that pumps us, our yeshut. This is where it starts the Sinat Chinam. Comes the Megillah and teaches us the, the remedy how I'm closing all these gates for this klipa to penetrate, this Haman, it just tells me something very simple. Do all these mitzvot. Mika Megillah goes that you have to learn Torah. You have to learn Torah. Without Torah, you don't have power to do anything. There's no such a thing. And there's no such a thing that a person, I know every person that I met tells me, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time to learn Torah. There's no such a thing. You find the time. Learning Torah less than two hours a day, this is not learning Torah. And everybody can find time. Don't even, I know you're all looking at me like, oh, two hours. You find the two hours. You have to learn. Without Torah, you, 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 we're worthless. We don't have any powers to fight anything if we don't learn Torah. And it is durable. It's not such a big deal. You're talking about an hour in the morning, an hour at night. If you summarize your day, you see how much free time you have, so you apply it to learn Torah. The second, and le women also learn Torah. The second, the, the second and the third, and the, uh, the second and the third mitzvot, what are they actually doing? Avat Israel. I'm giving charity, and I'm giving mishloach manot. The matanot lev your name is charity, it's milut chasadim. I have to do milut chasadim. And it's not putting, you know, a check, an $18 check once a month to, to my favorite organization. That's not the charity that one needs to do. If you can't do the charity with your money, you do it with your time. You do it with your mind, you do it with your knowledge, you do it with your car, you babysit your neighbors. You do anything. Charity is not writing a check. You have money, you write a check. But charity you do with every tool that you have. You have time, you post on Facebook, you do charity. But you have to do Gmilut Chasadim. And Gmilut Chasadim is a general term of everything. It's money, it's time, it's everything that you can do. If, you, if a day passed and if you didn't do at least five acts of Chesed, don't go to sleep. I'm not joking. And don't look at me like it's not possible. It's very possible. And the third thing, it's talking about Mishloach Manot. Mishloach Manot, the Kabbalistic explanation of Mishloach Manot is that I give you something and you give me something. Every Neshama has a Nitzotz, a godly spark that just belongs to me. But the ultimate Ahavat Israel is that I give you what I have and you give me what you have. We're sharing our godly spark. This is the ultimate Avat Israel. 
Amat Israel is not standing up in the bus for somebody else or, or, or smiling. Is that I'm willing to give you what belongs to me, and in return you give me what belongs to you. This is the Mishloach Manot. I don't need the bag with the wafers. This is for the kids. And the last thing is Mishteh V'Simcha. You have to be B'Simcha. You don't have to be drunk all day long, but you have to be B'Simcha. If a person doesn't serve Hashem B'Simcha, then his entire Avodat Hashem, I don't, know, I don't know how you can serve Hashem without being B'Simcha. Now, the reality is that you said we have to deal with life. Yeah, you have to deal with life, but deal with, a, deal with life with a smile. Yeah, you have to fight, you have to pay the rent, you have to constantly, you're dealing with problems in, in life, but at least do it with simcha, with a smile, because Hashem put this headache on you. This Yesurim, this hardship that we're going through, is not because Hashem is mean, it's not because Hashem is punishing us, it's not because of all these theories that people come through. It's Hashem preparing us to the Gilui Lukut that we're about to get when Mashiach comes. In the time of Mitzrayim, it says that they were slaves, they were ruled by Avoda Kasha Vechomer Velvenim, with hard work, with Chomer and Levenim and bricks. And we still we have the exact same thing now. We have Avoda Kasha, we work hard, and we have the Gelut of Chomer, of the materialism here, and Levenim, bricks, this heaviness. We still have, we're dealing with the same thing. So the Yisurim that they got then was in order for them to be worthy to see the godly revelation in Matam Torah. So we're going through the same thing. So at least put a smile on your face. Because it's Hashem refining us and preparing us that when Mashiach is going to come, I can stand front row and see it and be part of the Geula. So the point is that Bemet, I prepared a lot of sources. And if you want, I'll email you. I have more sources. That's not the point. We don't need sources. We know that we're at the time of the Geula. We are at the time. It's Mamash, the Etrat, the, the, it's, this is the time. We're now at this, what's called this Le'et Erev. Now it's the time. There's a, a, another amazing prophecy in the Zohar that it's talking about when Mashiach is going to come. It's talking about when the Shekhinah is going to put its head between the sphere of Yesod and Hod. Eh, 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 Netzach and Hod. This is what the Zohar is talking about. Now if you're looking at the, at the uh, years, Every thousand years corresponds to the ten sfirot. So if you take a thousand years and you divide a hundred years to each sfira, so our time right now is exactly in between the Netzach and the Hod. And the Malchut, which is the Malchut Bet David, it's, you know, in between right now the Netzach and the Hod. You calculate the years, it's exactly right now. Mamash exactly right now. There's another uh, 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 Kabbalah from Rabbi Wasserman, I don't know if you heard of him, that's not the point. That he, at the time of the Holocaust, he said that it's about, the Holocaust is going to end in five years. That's what he said. And it's going to end with unbelievable pain and sorrow and hardship. But they're going to pass ten Shemitot, ten sabbatical years. And at the tenth one, that's when Mashiach is going to come. And we just finished now, half a year ago, the tenth sabbatical year. That's with the Arizal. Arizal also has a lot of prophecies at the time of the Gula, and Arizal says, and ben Mashiach, and ben David ba, el ben Motzei Shevit. A lot of Ekubalim and a lot of, of, of big sages in our history, they knew exactly when Mashiach is coming. They just, in, in their knowledge, said, if I'm going to say, then how, how is the generation going to hold? So the point is not to search for proof if it's coming. The point is to prepare myself that I'm going to be part of the Gula. It's a very big schut to be part of the Geulah. A lot of people are not going to be part of the Geulah. They might come back in Tchiat Ametim. They might have a chilek in the Olam Abba. But to see the redemption coming and going into your car and driving to Yerushalayim to see the first korban, you can't even imagine the schut. A lot of people in America say, okay, when he comes, I'll hop on the plane. And you know what a waiting list is going to be on the, tr on the planes? There is not enough planes in the world to fly six million people from North America. There's not enough runways on Ben Gurion to, for airplanes to land. So of course we want to go with the opinion that Mashiach is going to come in, 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 a, in a very miraculous way that we're going to come on the, on the clouds. You know, the Ben Ishchai says it's, this is Kepshuto. So I, I wouldn't mind hovering on a cloud. 
But I, I don't want to take a chance. What if it doesn't come on clouds? I'm going to have to sit in New York on a five months waiting list? Why? So just by being here and being part of the Gerula, that's a very big schut. A person needs to wake up in the morning and thank Hashem for the fact that I'm, I'm 30 kilometers from where Beit HaMikdash is going to be. Not only the fact that I opened my eyes, that I'm close. Now the point is, if you have to take something out of tonight, is what am I doing when I leave this door? You know, sources are nice, stories are good, advice is great, but what am I doing when I leave this door? I want to leave this door that I'm, what am I doing tonight? A, that I'm going to make sure that I can battle my own Haman. That I don't have him distracting me all day long. This is the first thing. You take a paper, you take a pen, and you start writing at least what you have to do to make sure that you start closing all these gaps that this klipa is going to come and affect you. And then you start meditating in your mind, what do I have to do to follow these four hints that the Megillah just gave me last week? How am I applying, applying to start learning Torah as much as I can? How am I starting doing a lot of chesed? How am I doing this Ahavat Yisrael, but the real Ahavat Yisrael? Not the fake Ahavat Yisrael. And the point is that a lot of places where I go, people are you know, they're raising their eyebrow when I say Ahavat Yisrael. The reality is that almost any second individual in the religious community, they're failing in Ahavat Yisrael. Because this guy wears his hat like that, and God, that guy wears the hat like this, and she goes with the shaito like this, and she goes with the, with the shmata like that. Who cares? Hashem doesn't care how I'm dressed. It's nonsense. And we all fail in the Sinat Chinam because this guy, his kippah is like that. And all these names and the, the, the you know, the, 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 the grouping. He's from that group and he's like this. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. And we're all failing in it. We're all failing, you know, a person will sit in shul and somebody will come and do something in shul and a person will have the chutzpah in his mind to say, how dare he do this? How dare does he talk in shul? A minute ago he talked, but when he sees somebody else who talks, he's like, shh! Yeah, but you just talked two minutes ago. So the point is that one has to be very true to himself. And to really apply the Avat Israel is to wake up in the morning and say, the Arizal says it. And we read it in the Nosach, whoever davens in the Nosach of the Ari, the first line that we read in the morning, it says, Areni mekabel alai mitzvat ase shel vahavta lecha kamocha. And one needs to apply it. You go to the, to the Tziyun, to the Kever of the Ari, I have the schut of living 500 meters from there. I'm there three times a, a week. It says on the Kever, Areni mekabel alai mitzvat ase shel vahavta lecha kamocha. This is the foundation of everything. If you accept on yourself the mitzvah of Avta Lecha Kamocha, that's it. You're in your personal redemption. But you have to apply it, not just to put it in titles. And if you apply it, then you, you, you know, they, they say in America, don't, don't talk the talk, you walk the walk. So you've got to walk the walk. And the last thing is Mishteh V'Simcha. The Mishteh mainly goes on Shabbat and, and beautifying the meals of Shabbat. It's not just buying, you know, you know cheap chalas and, and, and uh, tuna salad and making, I'm not saying anything wrong, you know, I know you work hard on your meals, but making Shabbat a very special and festive, festive meal. How this Mishteh... How do you have Avat for someone who's not particularly friendly or nice? So Techev, I'll answer your questions, but I, I want to make the point across that you, you, each and every one of you understand what you need to do when you leave this door. And you have to apply all these four things into your life. And only when each and every one of us will do his own personal hishtadlut and change, that's how we can actually start affecting the klal. And the more you can do in a greater scope, like you said, running a big Facebook page that you're affecting hundreds of people, then you do that. You want to do it on a large scale. You have the ability, you do it on a large scale. If you don't have the ability, you do it on a small scale. The point is that this klipa brings us to this place, a state of mind, that I'm numb. And this is this klipa that they had in Mitzrayim, this kelev, that you, you, you're comfortable in your comfort zone. You want to go out of Galut, and it somehow convinces you, go back, 
It's good where you are. Why wake? Why why work hard? You already from. Why become more from? You already did enough. The point is to go out of this. To go out of the state that no, I don't want to be stayed in my comfort zone. You know, we are created in a way that we are con considered a mehalech, something that walks. We're not inanimates. We're not stuck in one place, we constantly have to move. Somebody today told me, yeah, but I'm already very from. I told her, yes, we'll get more from. No, so, she said, it's endless. I said, yeah, yes, it is endless. Every day you have to be more from than what you were yesterday. You don't have to be crazy. You just have to be realistic. The reality is that we're so close you have to look at it at two angles. The first angle is what am I making, how am I making sure that I'm part of it? And the other angle is how am I making sure that it's coming faster? And if you apply this to your daily thoughts, then you actually will actually do it. You actually actualize it. And since the time is running out, you don't have the luxurious time of saying, okay, when the kids go out of college, and no, there's no time. There's no time to say, I'll do it when I finish this project. It's right now. There's no other time. Don't say I'm going to do it when I get there. The same way with the guy who wanted to invest and went to Rabbi Kanevsky. There's not no investing. And now you invest in Torah and Mitzvahs. Once Mashiach comes, money is not going to have value. Business is not going to have value. What's going to have value is Torah and Mitzvahs and mainly Gmirut Chasadim. So the point of tonight, what you need to carry out from this door, is what am I doing tonight to change my own personal life, my own surrounding, my close surrounding, my greater surrounding, and how am I making sure that Mashiach is coming faster and that I'm part of it. And Bezad Hashem, you have the power that we just annulled this clip of Haman three days ago. You have a whole month now to elevate yourself to the perfect, to the, to the suspicious night of Lel Seder where our Neshama gets this Gilu Lakut that comes from the Sphira of Ketel. According to nature, we have to start cleaning for chametz. But this is just to, you know, to, to, to get the, the, the dirt off. The real avodah is getting all the chametz out of me. This yeshut, this ego, this air balloon that is in me, then the, you have to clean the chametz. Cleaning the, the floors is good. And cleaning the kitchen, it's fine. You have to do that. But the real cleaning of the chametz is you clean your own chametz from inside of you. And every day you clean one crumb of chametz. One day you're cleaning the chametz of jealousy. And tomorrow I'm going to clean the chametz of anger. And the next day I'm going to clean the chametz of not being patient. And the next day I'm going to clean the chametz of being envy. And the next day and the next day and you, every day you clean a piece of your chametz. And when it comes to you, Dalet of Nisan, you totally did Bil chametz. And that's it. And you're ready to receive this godly light that comes on Lel Sedel. Bezad Hashem, we're going to be doing already this year Korban Pesach, and Bezad Hashem, we're not going to have to, to work till Pesach to clean the chametz, but every day that we're still waiting for Mashiach to come, then we have a lot of work to do, and it's not time to be, paid, to, to be lazy right now, and it's time to go to work, and it is the time, and we don't even know what's waiting for us. If we would know really what's waiting for us, we would be climbing up the walls, up and down all day long. <coughs> the point is that you have to take all that you heard tonight, and Bezad Hashem, I'm going to make sure that the video goes online within the next couple of days, that you can review it over and over. The point is to apply it. Don't walk out of this door and say, wow, it was a very nice night, and go to bed. Or go on Facebook. You apply it. The point is to apply it. Amaseh hu aikam. The thing is like this, you said about your parents or the grandparents who were in the Holocaust. When you see a house burning on fire, you don't stand from outside and saying, hello, is anybody home? You run in and you pull somebody out. Now, a lot of opinion says, ah, why are you going crazy? America is fine. There's a majority of opinion that says America is not fine. And it's, it's literally a time, a time bomb. Yeah. The point is that you have to do whatever you can in your power 
And you, sometimes you have to be annoying, and sometimes you have to be drilling in people's heads over and over and over, the same way that Rabbi Akiva saw the drops going on in the, and eventually it penetrated. You have to, to drill into people's... It has to be done in a very diplomatic way, in a very smart way. David HaMelech gives us a very good advice. David HaMelech says, Im tamim, im gvar tamim, titamam. Im ikesh, titpatal. If somebody is tamim, meaning innocent, innocent, tamim is not necessarily innocent. Tamim, it means that he's true and honest and he accepts what you say. So you talk to him in the same level. Aval im ikesh, somebody is stubborn, titpatal. Titpatal means go in all sorts of tricky ways. So ultimately, a person has to come for the decision by himself. And if a person is real drilled down to the ground and nothing moves them, you know, you have to do your part, your ishtadlut. But you can't let go, but you have to do it in a smart way that they're not going to, you know, go too crazy or anti. Some people, you push them too much, the effect is, is the complete opposite. Ultimately, there's no, there's no uh, uh, hocus pocus, there's no s s words, what to say. You have to do whatever you can in your power to show the reality. The reality is that Hashem created the, the ground. Hashem prepared the ground for all scenarios. He prepared the ground that the Geula can come in a nice way. He Hashem prepared the, 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 the scenario that if it has to be with a war, in one day there's a war. Everything has a meaning. But not that I know why sh clouds come in shapes. How do you have Abba Yisrael for somebody who's not friendly or difficult? That's the Abba Yisrael. <laughs> Which is what? Is accepting that person. <laughs> That's the true Abba Yisrael. Interfacing with them? Even though it's, it's not healthy for you? Right? No. The thing is like this. There's no black and white answer. Because each individual is completely different. The ultimate Avat Israel is to tolerate somebody that you hate. And to arouse love to that person and understand that that person right now is in his exile or he's sick or whatever and he might be doing very bad actions so you can hate his actions but still love his neshama. And the real Avat Israel is when you have to deal with something that you really can't tolerate. That's the Avat. Uh, to, to have Avat Israel to your best friend, that's not a big deal. To have Avat Israel for somebody that is completely opposite from you and is pressing all your buttons. That's the real Avat Israel. How to deal with it? Each individual is completely different because in some cases it is good advice to tell the person, move away, don't be next to that person. It's bad for you. Don't do Avat Israel with that person. I can't give you a clear answer because each individual is completely, completely different. In some cases, yes, some places, in some cases a relationship can be so toxic that it hurts you and your family. You have to not have anything to do with that person. Don't, don't even try to. The ultimate Avat Israel is when you look at somebody and instead of arousing feelings of hate towards that person because they're dressed a certain way or they said something a certain way or even if they did something that is not according to the Torah, you still arouse love to that person and you melamed schut on that person because you don't know who's that person, what he went through, what he's going through, why he's doing what he's doing. We don't know nothing. And the reality is we right away judge a person and our judgmental system arouses all these emotions. This is where the Yetzirah is having a party. He just starts pressing the buttons. The point is, is to, to drop this screen and saying, first of all, I have to lower the schut on this person. I don't know what, why he's behaving like that. Maybe but he's having... The person who's toxic is like a family member that you can't just like erase and say, I can stay away. Then again, I told you, that there's no black and white answer because it depends who's the family member. It can be a husband, it can be a child, it can be a mom. So some cases, yes, yeah, some cases you have to move away and you have to make sure that, that you that you move yourself away in a way that is not affecting in a negative way by rather putting you a little bit away. But if it's affecting you too much, then you, it's not about having Avat Israel, it's about common sense that you can't let that person rule, ruin your life. The Avat Israel that you have to have here is to understand that maybe that person is not well in their mind. Or maybe they're going through something very difficult 
and you're the punching bag. You don't know why that person is going through that. Maybe they're going through some trauma. The Avat Israel is to accept the fact that they're suffering themselves and not to hate them. This is called Erech Apayim. This is the highest midah that one can reach to refine. Erech Apayim, I think it says in English, forbearance. Is that a word? Forbearance. forbearance. That's Erech Apayim. That somebody does something real bad to you and you still forgive them and you're saying, it's from Hashem. Of course, you can dive into that person. You can do a lot of things to this person. But to give you a clear black and white answer, I can't because it really depends on so many different things. You have to, to, to it has nothing to do right now with the Avat Israel. The Avat Israel is that you have to not hate that person that's driving you crazy. And not to judge them, and not to arouse anger next, uh, against them, and not to lower anything, judgment against that person. To say, okay, that person, either they're sick in their mind, either they're going to, through some type of things, something is happening there, not to be upset at them. How to deal with that person? You have to find the, 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 the right place where you don't get too affected, and you can still be around that person, and if you can, then you, then you find a distance. Unfortunately, this is part of the galut. This is what we're suffering from a lot, is the communication between certain individuals. You just have to find the right way how to deal with it. Unfortunately, I don't have a clear answer. Because I don't know the person, what they're doing, how they're doing, where it's coming from. You know, you always have to hear the other side too. In some cases, bemet, one side, I'm not saying in this case, in some cases, one side is bemet, mentally ill, that the second party, there's nothing much that you can do. But if not, then you have to hear the other side. Well, why is the other side? There has to be something. Right. I'm not saying chas v'shalom, who's right or who's wrong. The point is that you have to, everything has to be dealt with love. The Torah tells you, darkeh darkeh noam. You have to deal, it doesn't mean that you have to give, give uh, 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 what's the word, not give up, but give in. Right. It doesn't mean you have to give in, but it has to be done. Come on. Yeah, with love, with kavod, with respect, not with anger and hate and uh, I'm right. So th the way to deal with it is one thing. How it affects you, sometimes Hashem puts in our proximity the people that pushes the right buttons. And the, uh, the ultimate level you want to reach to is how you're working on yourself that it doesn't affect you. That you will get here and there a punch to your face. It doesn't affect you. And you still put a smile on your face. And it doesn't affect you, Avodat Hashem. It doesn't bring you down. Because ultimately, it's a Nisayon from Hashem. Ultimately. So, things that we don't really know who they are. In some cases, you can kind of point and to see. And I'll give you one example. Now, there's this whole deal with this soldier that killed a, a murderer. And they're making him... A murderer. The one who go, the ones who go against him, you can kind of see that they're either the real Erevra, because a real, a real normal person, a real Jewish neshama, you're calling a, your own soldier a murderer. This doesn't make sense. You see that this is coming mamash from the poison of the Erevra. Ultimately, to know who it is, you don't know, because a lot of the souls are so trapped in the klipa. That they're literally like, there's like a spell on them. There are Jewish souls that they're so, you know, forget about, look at all these Jews that are missionaries and Jews for Yashka. They're hypnotized, they're like that. There's no life. I met one on the street in New York not too long ago. It's like a robot. It's, there's no life. He is a Jewish neshama, but it's so caught in the klipa that only Mashiach is going to break that klipa. So ultimately, who they are, you don't really know. The best advice here is not even to even focus on that, is rather focus on more positive things, because in, in the general, in the cosmic way of looking at it, if you're looking at good and bad, then right now if the bad is, in, in, is empowered, behit gabot, just add a lot of good. This by default will reduce the, the power of the evil.